If you have your Bibles, why don't you go ahead and go to Acts chapter 1. I'm going to pick right up where we left off last week, continuing this message. So Acts chapter 1, verse 4. The Bible says, but when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, you will be filled with power. And you'll be witnesses for me in Jerusalem and in all of Judea, Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. Let's pray. Father, we thank you again for this day and your many blessings. We thank you for the great promise of the Holy Spirit, the gift of the Father. And so, Father, I pray that today in this place that you would grant that gift to many. To those viewing online today, they would receive the gift of the Father, the Holy Spirit. I pray this place would be filled with the Holy Spirit. I pray for a great outpouring of your Spirit in this place today, God. Before we leave this house, I pray that you would pour your Spirit out on this house. God, on your people in a mighty way. Do your thing. God, I pray for a double portion of your anointing all over this sermon. God, all over every vessel in this sanctuary and those viewing online, anoint their ears, their hearts, their minds, and their eyes. Open up their ears, their eyes, so that they might receive a word from the Father today. We thank you. We honor you. In your mighty name, amen. Can we go to the next verse? I think I forgot a couple verses to read. Verse 5, actually. If you could pull that up. The Bible says, For John baptized with water, but in a few days you will be baptized in the Holy Spirit. I want to say in a few minutes, <laughs> in a few minutes, some of you are going to be baptized in the Holy Spirit. I said in a few minutes, some of you will be baptized in the Holy Spirit. We're in the 12th week of the sermon series, Deeper, and praise God we're going deeper. Yeah. Now, how many are going deeper? Let me see your hands. I believe, no, I'm, I'm going to say this, I prophesy you will go even deeper, believe me. Come on, I prophesy those who want to go deeper will go deeper. Today we're going to continue this message on the gift, the gift that the Father promised the promised gift is the holy spirit church and the greatest gift that god has given his church is the baptism of the holy spirit but just like any gift you have to receive it because you can reject it i said you can reject it but by rejecting this gift you're rejecting the gifts of holy spirit and the power of holy spirit through holy spirit comes a power to do what we can't do listen i can't operate in the gifts of the spirit without holy spirit y'all it's impossible i can't live preach or operate in power without holy spirit power see without holy spirit power our results are greatly limited limited to our doing and our gifting and the last thing i want is what i can do the worst thing we can do as a church is to settle for what we can do in our power, in our passion, and in our gifting because it greatly limits our results. And thus the believer, the minister, and or the church are of little to no value to the kingdom of God. Because remember the Bible says that the kingdom of God isn't based on words or on talk, but on what? Power. The power of holy Spirit, And there's far too much talking in the church today and not enough power. Come on, there's too many services being held and too many messages being delivered, too many songs being sung with no real power. There's too much just going through the motions in the modern day church and not enough anointed preaching, speaking, singing, prophesying and proclaiming God's holy word. But all that's about to change. Because the Bible says in the last days I will pour out my spirit on all people. And Jesus said in Acts chapter 1 verse 8 that when the Holy Spirit comes on you, you will receive power. Power 
to be a witness. So according to Jesus, in order to be a witness, you have to be filled with what? Holy Spirit power. And, and so it's almost like it's impossible to be a witness without Holy Spirit power because we're operating or we're witnessing in our own power, in our own strength, in our own ability, in our own way, which produces little to no results. And remember, we're filled to be spilled. That's the title of my sermon today, Filled to be Spilled. Turn to your neighbor and say, you're filled to be spilled. So to witness, to preach, to sing, or to operate with power, you have to be filled with Holy Spirit power because you can't give what you haven't received. Listen, church, we inhale before we exhale. Everyone inhale. Hold it. Some of you turning purple. Let it go. Exhale. <laughs> we inhale before we exhale. We receive before we give. And so we receive it so that we can give it or so that we can operate in it. This empowerment is called the anointing. Somebody say the anointing. Come on, do you feel the anointing in the house today? Listen, but the anointing, this word has been greatly misused in the church. Many mistake anointing or many mistake performing with anointing. And many confuse gifting with anointing but see the anointing isn't for you to put on a show or for you to glow no the anointing is for holy spirit power to flow mm. i said the anointing isn't for someone to glow or to put on a show no it's for holy spirit power to flow that's the purpose of the anointing and in the old testament being anointed meant pouring oil over someone's head who was appointed by God. See, with God, when you're appointed, you're anointed. Oh, come on. I said, when you're appointed with God, you're anointed. And when you're appointed and anointed, you're not disappointed. It's, it's when you're appointed and not anointed that you're disappointed. Think about it. When the preaching is anointed, you're not disappointed. You, you don't leave church disappointed. But when the preaching isn't anointed, you leave church disappointed. My prayer is that you would never leave Crossroads Church disappointed. I pray that my sermons would always be anointed by the power of Holy Spirit to do what I can't do, to speak a word into your heart, to release it into the atmosphere and into your lives. Not a word from Joseph, but a word from the Father for his people because I'm not up here preaching in my ability church I'm I'm preaching in the power and the anointing of Holy Spirit if not I'm just going to go home because I'm not after little to no results I want the results of the father but see this anointing oil of the old testament was symbolic of something it was symbolic of the Holy Spirit. See, Jesus was never, <laughs> they, they didn't pour oil over Jesus' head and anoint him. <laughs> he was anointed by Holy Spirit, church. Acts 10, 38 says that. No one had to pour oil over his head. No, and if you read the Bible, the Holy Spirit came down upon him and he was anointed by the Holy Spirit. Anointing comes from and through the Holy Spirit. In 1 John 2, 27, the Bible says we receive the anointing from Holy Spirit. So if you want to be anointed, you must be filled with the Holy Spirit. You want to be anointed? Then be filled with the Holy Spirit. You want to be spilled? Then be filled. Come on, somebody needs to be filled this morning. I said, somebody needs to be filled. Somebody say, be filled. Be filled. Acts 2, 4. And everyone present was filled with the Holy Spirit and began speaking in other language as the Holy Spirit gave them the ability. I want to focus on those last three words just for a second. Gave them the ability. I said gave them the ability. Gave them the ability. Who gave them the ability? 
Holy Spirit gave them the ability to speak. Come on, Holy Spirit gives you the ability to speak. Holy Spirit gives me the ability and the anointing to preach. Holy Spirit gives you the anointing and the ability to overcome whatever addiction that is in your life. Holy Spirit gives the ability. And the Bible says that everyone in the room was filled with the Holy Spirit. Everyone in the room. See, many times we confuse the Holy Spirit with a feeling instead of a person. But see, the Holy Spirit is the third person of the Trinity. God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So everyone in this room was filled with the person and the presence of Holy Spirit. The gift of the Father is the person and the presence of Holy Spirit in you. Point number one, his present is his presence. (laughs) Come on, the present is his presence. The greatest gift or the greatest present that you could ever receive in your life is the presence of the Almighty God, the Spirit of the living God living inside of you. He gave them His presence on the day of Pentecost. The gift of the Father is the filling and the indwelling presence and person of Holy Spirit. It's the presence of God in you. In John chapter 16, Jesus told the disciples, it will be better for me to leave you so that I can send the Holy Spirit. And I can imagine the disciples, especially Simon Peter, thinking or probably saying, Jesus, how in the world will it ever be better for me for you to leave me? But see, the only thing better than God with you, believer, is God in you. Oh, come on. I said the only thing better than God with you is God in you. His present is his presence. And the Bible says everyone in the room was, that was present was filled with his presence. There's been times or services where everyone in the room felt his presence, but not everyone in the room was filled with his presence. Listen, it's one thing to feel his presence, but it's a completely another thing to be filled with his presence. Come on, it's one thing to feel the Holy Spirit, but it's another thing to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Not everyone who feels his presence is filled with his presence. Come on, you can feel his presence but not be filled with his presence. Think about it, it's like this. There's been times where I've felt a strong demonic presence in the room. And listen, I'm not just talking about when my hormonal, emotional teenage kids walked into the room. That's a joke. I've walked into certain rooms and felt a strong demonic presence of oppression, depression, and possession in the room. But listen to me, church. Just because I felt a strong demonic presence doesn't mean that I was filled with a strong demonic presence. Are you with me? Do you see what I'm saying? Do you understand the difference? You can feel it but not be filled with it. And in Genesis chapter 1, verse 2, the Bible says that the Spirit of God was hovering over the water. Let me say it this way, was moving over the water. Now let me explain it in a way that you can envision it. The Spirit of God moved over the water but didn't get in the water. Come on, the Spirit of God was moving over the water but didn't go swimming in the water, y'all. Can you envision it now? The Spirit of God moved over the water but didn't move into the water. There's been many services where the Spirit of God moved in the service. How many have ever felt the Spirit of God move in a service? Let me see your hands. Come on, through a song through the worship, through the sermon, through the altar call, the Spirit of God moved. Listen, and everyone in the room might have felt His presence, but not everyone in the room was filled with His presence. There's a difference. And listen, I don't just want you to feel His presence. I want you to be filled with His presence. I don't just want Holy Spirit to move over our sanctuary or or, or to move over our service. No, I want him to move in. Come on, I don't don't just want you to feel the Holy Spirit in this service today. No, I want you to be filled with the Holy Spirit in this service. Holy Spirit, don't just let your presence be felt in this sanctuary. No, fill each and every person in this sanctuary with your presence today. In fact, why don't you just go ahead and hijack our service today? 
Come on, fill this place with your presence. Fill these people with your presence. Fill those viewing online with your presence. Fill living rooms. Fill coffee shops. Fill workplaces. God, fill Starbucks with your presence. Lord knows they need it this morning. Fill this place with your presence. We need to be filled with his presence much more than we just need to feel his presence. Are you with me? Ephesians 5.18, the Bible says, be filled with the Holy Spirit. Come on, somebody say be filled. Yeah. Note that the Bible doesn't say, I want you to feel the Holy Spirit. Come on. No, it says be filled with the Holy Spirit. And remember, it's one thing to feel the Holy Spirit, but it's a completely different thing to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Listen, church, God doesn't just want you to feel his presence this morning. No, he wants to fill you with his presence. That's point number two. God doesn't just want you to feel him. He wants to fill you. I said, God doesn't just want you to fill him this morning. He wants to fill you with his presence. Believers, don't be satisfied with just feeling his presence. Be filled with his presence. Somebody say, be filled. Yeah. Come on, one more time. Be filled. Be filled. I, I feel his presence in this room today. I feel a strong anointing on my sermon today. I feel the Holy Ghost working and moving in this sanctuary today. I feel his presence up in here today. Come on, church, can you feel his presence? Then shout, be filled. Be filled. Come on, be filled. After every statement, I want you to shout that. I prophesy those who want to be filled today will be filled. I prophesy that our church will be filled. I prophesy that our services will be filled. I prophesy that our leaders will be filled. I prophesy that our worship team will be filled. I prophesy that our city will be filled. I prophesy that our nation will be filled with the spirit of the living God once again. Come on, don't doubt it, believe it, because the Bible says in the last days I will pour out my spirit on all people. That means every city, every nation, every state, every place will be filled with the spirit of the living God. And then the Bible says, your sons and your daughters will prophesy. And, and, and so I prophesy this morning, your sons and your daughters will be filled. Shout be filled. Be filled. I prophesy your homes will be filled. Be filled. I, I prophesy that your children, your teenagers, and your spouse will be filled. And the Bible says that our old men will dream dreams. I prophesy our old men, our old people, or better said, our senior citizens will be filled with the spirit of the living God once again. See, when the spirit of God moves in, church, the demonic spirits have to move out. And how many know we've allowed demonic spirits to occupy too many places and too many spaces for too long? In 1 John 4, 3, the Bible says that the spirit of the Antichrist is already at work in our world today. And with that comes the spirit of deception, the spirit of confusion, delusion, perversion, the spirit of division, jealousy, the spirit of Jezebel. Church, the spirit of Lucifer is running loose in our world today. That's why he's called Lucifer, because he's running loose. Come on, he's running loose in our nation. He's running loose in our government. He's running loose in our city. He's running loose in our schools. He's running loose in our homes. See, the snake slithers into our homes through culture, through the media, mainstream media, social media, through our celebrities, through our athletes, through our movies, our TVs, and our radios. But it's time for the church to say no more. Come on, you're no more. You're no longer running loose in my home. You're no longer running loose in my family. You're no longer running loose in my children's lives. You're no longer running loose in my marriage. You're no longer running loose in my city. You're no longer running loose in my schools. You're no longer running loose in my nation. Somebody put that snake back in his cage. You're no longer running loose in my life, Satan. See, the Bible says, in fact, Jesus says that you and I have the power and the authority through him to bind and to loose demonic spirits. And to bind and to loose. 
Come on, let's put them back in their cage where they belong. Remember, you're filled with the spirit of the living God. And remember, the Bible says, greater is he that is in you than he that is running loose in our world today. And remember that light drives out darkness. Church, when and where the spirit of the living God is, the demonic spirits have to move out. I said, have to move out. They have to. And so that's why we need believers filled with the spirit of the living God running for political positions today to move those demonic spirits out of office. Come on, we need believers filled with the spirit of the living God running for school board positions to move those demonic spirits out. We we need teachers in the public school classroom filled with the spirit of the living God once again to move those demonic spirits of Lucifer out of the classroom. Those demonic spirits that are teaching and confusing our children with delusion, perversion, and deception. Come on, we need believers filled with the spirit of the living God once again to stand up and drive the spirit of darkness out. The spirit of deception and perversion and delusion out of our city, out of our homes, out of our nation and out of our lives. We need believers filled with the spirit of the living God to do what only he can do because we can't do it in our power, church. We can't do it in our gifting. We can't do it in our ability, but oh my, through the gifting and the power of Holy Spirit, there's nothing, no demonic spirit that can keep you down, that can keep you chained and shackled, but oh, through the power of Holy Spirit, Every chain is broken. Every stronghold is broken. And we're free. We're free. Completely free. We're not talking about freedom. We're not, we're not just fantasizing about freedom. We're living in it. We're operating in it. We're walking in it. It's time... To evict those demons come on through the power of Holy Spirit you have the authority to evict them to cast them out somebody say move out <laughs> evict those demons that are hijacking your thoughts your mind and your feelings come on evict those demons that are harassing your family your children and your home evict those demons that are attacking your marriage and your spouse evict those demons that are plaguing your mind your body and your finances evict them in the name of Jesus cast them out in Jesus name come on say move out you have no authority or power in my life move on Come on, find another swine to fill. Don't forget who's inside of you. And remember, he's greater. So start living like he's greater, believer. Come on, start thinking like he's greater. Start praying like he's greater. Come on, we need to start worshiping like he's greater. I'm preaching he's greater, church. He's greater. In 1 John 6, 19, 1 Corinthians 6, 19, the Bible says, have you forgotten that the Spirit of God lives inside of you? Turn to your neighbor and say, have you forgotten? Come on, believer, have you forgotten that the Spirit of the living God lives inside of you? So therefore, the spirit of deception has to move out. Come on, the spirit of depression has to move out. The spirit of addiction has to move out. The spirit of sickness has to move out. And every demonic spirit that's lying to you, blinding you, and binding you has to move out in Jesus' name. Evict them. You've entertained them long enough. Evict them. 1 Corinthians 3, 17 says, where the spirit of the Lord is. <laughs> There is freedom. See, Holy Spirit-filled people are free people. Come on, I said Holy Spirit-filled people are free people. And and, and filled people fill people and free people free people. Did I lose you? I said filled people fill people and free people free people. Come on, how many are filled this morning? Okay, how many are free? It's time to start living like we're filled. 
It's time to start living like we're free. I'm going to ask you again, how many are free? Okay. okay, hold up. Hold up before you get too excited. Before we allow Holy Spirit to just to... Pew. Listen to me. His, where his presence is absent, there is bondage. If where his spirit is, there is freedom. Where his presence is, where his spirit is absent, there is bondage. Think about it. Where his spirit is absent, there's chains, there's shackles, there's depression, there's anxiety, there's oppression, there's possession. See, as long as the spirit of God is absent, there will be bondage. However, the Bible says in Isaiah 10, 27, that where the anointing is, the anointing breaks the yoke of bondage in our life. Come on, the anointing breaks the yoke of bondage in our life. And, and where does the anointing come from? Where do you receive the anointing, church? From Holy Spirit. And, and, and so to make sure that we break the yokes of bondage, we need to be filled with what? With the Holy Spirit. Through Holy Spirit comes the power and the anointing to break every yoke of bondage in your life. That's the Word of God. Stand on it. Believe it. So when you're anointed, you're not disappointed because you're not living in bondage. It's when you're not anointed or you forget that you're anointed that you're living in bondage. See, confusion, depression, and addiction creep in when we lose sight of our anointing. So it's either the church, the modern day church today isn't anointed or it's forgotten that it's anointed. And, and so the modern day church either needs to be filled or remember it's filled. See, when the church is filled with the spirit of the living God, it's no longer filled with bound believers, depressed believers, addicted believers, believers living in sin and controlled by sin. No, it's filled with free Believers, believe in, and, and believers being delivered and sanctified day by day because that's the work of Holy Spirit. And so it's time for the church and believers to be free. It's time for the church and believers to be filled. But listen, the only way to be free is to be filled. That's point number three. To be free, you must be filled. If you want to be free, you need to be filled. And there's some of you that need to be free this morning. And there's some of you that need to be filled. But the only way to be free is to be filled. I'm going to wrap this up. I'm, I'm cutting it short to give Holy Spirit time to do what only He can do. Come on, I preached a short sermon so that he could pour his spirit out. Again, there's some of you here today that need to be filled, and there's some of you that need to be free. But the only way to be free is to be filled. And the only way to continually be free is to continually be filled. So some of you need a refill today. Come on, how many could use a refill? Listen, it's time for those who are filled to be refilled. And it's time for everyone else to be filled. If you need a refill, I want you to stand to your feet right where you are. Okay, if you need to be filled for the first time, I want you to stand to your feet. And I want to close with this verse. And I'm going to ask the worship team to go into one last song as, as we give Holy Spirit time. In, in Luke chapter 11, verse 13, Jesus said that if you ask, the Father will give you the Holy Spirit. That's, it's as plain as that. If you ask, he will give you the Holy Spirit. In the Amplified, it says if you continue to ask, he will give you the Holy Spirit. And so right now, all over this place, can we begin to ask the Father for the Holy Spirit like we really, really want the Holy Spirit? Come on, can we begin to ask the Father for the Holy Spirit like we really, really need the Holy Spirit?
Come on, can we ask the Father right where we are to fill us with the Holy Spirit, to fill this sanctuary with the Holy Spirit, to fill this place, to fill this person with the Holy Spirit?